Good morning and welcome to St. Peter's. Glad to be with us today. Welcome to all our online, all our online viewers. Today's order service is going to be morning praise, which is found in verse 45. And we'll be starting with the first hymn, hymn 255. My name is Spencer Peach, and I will be your service today. Hymn 255. on page 46.
Almighty God, we thank you for planting us in the seed of the word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy and bring forth fruits in faith and hope and love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson appointed for this Sunday is recorded in Isaiah 55. God sends his word out for the joy and for the Lord's renown. The, world, the word goes forth to plant faith and glory of God and the salvation of mankind. We read from verse 10. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which, which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper, and instead of the briar the myrtle will grow. This will be the Lord's renown for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with the singing of Psalm 65, which is found on page 89. respect for the words of Jesus, please stand for the gospel lesson. Our gospel lesson is recorded in Matthew 13. What a description of Jesus' ministry. What a description of ours. The sower scatters the seed of the gospel to all with no regard for where it might land. Yet most of his seed bears no fruit. The parable brings warning and such comfort. Jesus warns us that the seed of the word faces great opposition from sin Satan, and the world. Newborn faith can be choked out or scorched, yet Christ comforts us by showing the preacher's job is to sow the seed and leave the growing to God. We read from verse 1. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into the boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow the seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came up and ate it. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, 
and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Listen then to what the parable of the sword means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in the heart. This is the, sown, the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on the rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling in good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated for the singing of the next hymn, which is hymn 419, 419. American tale recounts the story of a chief who is telling, telling a gathering of young braves about the struggle within. It's like two dogs fighting inside of us, the chief told them. There is one good dog who wants to do what is right, and the other dog always wants to do what is wrong. Sometimes the good dog seems stronger and is winning the fight, but sometimes the bad dog is stronger and wrong is winning the fight. Who is going to win in the end? A young brave asked. 
The chief answers, the one you feed. As we look at our lives, we Christians may be inadvertently feeding the wrong dog. The chilling reality is that we can become just another statistic, succumbing to the deadly combination of selfishness, materialism, and greed that only hurt marriages, families, and finally souls. Skewed priorities yield a harvest of broken dreams and anguished hearts. Jesus' parable illustrates the sad consequences of distorted priorities. As we listen to our Savior today, may our prayer be this. Lord, spare us some skewed priorities so that we grasp the word and we grow in faith. Jesus' parable of the farmer illustrates the sad consequences of skewed priorities. He says, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came up and ate it. Now the seed, as Jesus tells us later on, is a message about the kingdom. In spite of the farmer's best skill and effort, not all those seed would end up in the prime location. Some would fall on the trampled down soil path. I'm not interested in anything religious, a lady says politely, but firmly, when offering, offered an invitation to the Christmas service. The beautiful home, the finely manicured lawn, and the luxury car in the driveway all reveal her true priorities. Those things were all that life seemed to be for her. She had no time for need or need for religion. Many, maybe some, somebody said or did something that turned her off. But the sad result is that she hardened her heart. She made a conscious effort to be unreceptive, lest we become smug. Know that we are not above this problem. Even Jesus' own disciples struggled with rock-hard hearts. Time and again, they missed the spiritual truths of Jesus' teaching. At one point, Jesus asked, Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes but fail to see? And hearts but fail to hear? Slowness and hardness of the heart are terrible spiritual soil conditions. As we aren't above the problem, sin, doubt, and unbelief constantly trample our hearts and threaten to keep our faith from growing. I know there are times when we feel that God has left us on this hard pavement to life, only to be devoured by the serpent and crows. This life is not fair. It can be an awful experience as the clock ticks from one miserable second to the next, and we're tempted to block God out of our lives. The truth is that only Christ can hear us in our stubborn unbelief. The gospel reminds us that Jesus has remedied our sins and failures. The sins of the past need not hunt us any longer. Christ has won forgiveness for them. They are washed away. Satan knows the gospel power and does not want to give it a, a chance to work. So he will send his carrying crows of doubt to, and guilt to peck away at us, threatening us to put up our defenses and to harden our hearts. Christ has put up a scarecrow in our lives to frighten away those predators. It's the cross. Satan knows he's conquered. He doesn't want us to believe it. Look at the cross and see you are forgiven. Trust in Jesus and Satan will have to flee from you. Jesus loves you and he promises never to leave you or forsake you. Jesus promises to walk with us through this life, through its sorrows and joys. And he promises to use whatever comes our way for our eternal good. Jesus continues. Some fell in the rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up and the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. In certain places of the farmer's field, a layer of rock lay close to the surface. Topsoil covers the rocks and offers a fertile and warm bed for the seed to quickly sprout up. The little plants couldn't sink roots into the soil, and so the plant was doomed when the blazing sun beat down upon it. Jesus explains the spiritual counterpoint for us. He says the seed that fell in the rocky place is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. I've seen it happen far too often. Someone hears the gospel for the first time and is excited, joyful and enthusiastic. They enter a Bible class. They are instructed in the word. But then the instruction period ends, and the persecution period begins. And they can't take the heat. The heat of ridicule, peer pressure, disappointment, or disillusionment. You belong to that church? That church that actually believes the Lord's Supper is real? And won't simply allow just anybody to take it without instruction in the Word? 
for. You actually think babies are sinful and need to be baptized? Then there's the hard lesson learned. Being a Christian isn't popular. It's hard to be a confessional Christian in a pluralistic world that would just as soon water down the Bible so that it says whatever people want it to say. Yet, in reality, it says nothing at all. It's hard to be a Christian when we have to deal with other Christians. Sometimes we sin against one another. The main problem with our congregation is the people in, in the pulpit and the people in the pews. We're sinful, and we sin against one another. If we allow our sins and burdens to consume us, then the faith that once lived will die, just as Jesus described in the parable. If we aren't rooted deep enough in God's word and aren't drawing on his love, then we risk, run the risk of withering away. Plants of faith that lack roots will not survive. We need to be encouraged by God's word, which urges us to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray for one another and ask God to grant us strength. Such plants of faith will stand up and thrive, even in the face of trouble. Our Savior goes on. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Anyone who has toyed with gardening can appreciate this picture. It's a constant battle to keep out the weeds. Weeds drain strength from good plants and can actually grow up, wrap around, and choke them. What are the weeds in our hearts? So many people are caught up in the daily snares of worry or concern. Oftentimes, the minor details of life. The worry weed is prominent in our lives. It pops out without notice, is fast-growing, and can rob a heart of faith. Did you clear your mind as you came to church this morning? Or are you stewing over what somebody said to you before the service? Maybe you're distracted by what you read in the paper. It could be you're tired because you chose not to get a good night's sleep. And now, you are struggling just to, just to listen. Your thoughts might be on an ailing friend or family member. Perhaps a financial dilemma occupies your mind. If so, the worry weed has sprung up and looms menacingly over you and threatens to strangle your faith. Only God's promise can root the worry weed from our lives. God promised his son would be our savior, and he kept his word. He has, Jesus is the author of our salvation. He has worked out our forgiveness. He is also controller over all things so that we may be able to remain his children. He alone makes it possible for us to grasp his word and hold on to it. If you were the farmer in this parable, you might get discouraged. But this farmer... Jesus found that his word was not in vain. Still, other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. I'm sure all of us would hope that this soil represents us. We're the good soil, but do our priorities in life always reflect that hope? We need to stop and ask. Do our eyes regularly scan the pages of God's word? Do we take the oppor every opportunity to go to the Lord's table to receive strength from his body and blood? Do we take time to talk to our children about the things that are important and equally important? Do we listen? Do we always seek the counsel of our pastor and fellow Christians when faced with challenges? Do our priorities reflect the hope that God's word will produce a harvest in our lives? Before we answer these questions, we need to realize that only God can make the heart into good soil for the gospel seed, in fact, for the gospel seed. In fact, God uses the seed of the gospel to change the soil of our hearts. Yes, we realize how our hearts are often hard, shallow, and infested with worry. God crushes our hearts. We realize we don't do the things God expects. When the gospel seed, packed with the power of God, tells, of us, tells us of a Savior who has done everything for us, we hear of a love so great it's hard to imagine. God sent his own seed, his only son, to sacrifice himself for us. That saving love penetrates our heart and gives new birth to faith and trust. There is a hidden, miraculous power in the seed of God's word. The power of love and the power of life. A healthy plant of faith will grow from the gospel seed and will produce a crop. The crop is the fruit of the Spirit. St. Paul describes the fruit, the fruit which the Holy Spirit produces through the gospel. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, 
patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Simply put, the Holy Spirit uses the gospel seed to produce more gospel seed in us, just as one kernel of corn produces a cob of corn. So we have more and more gospel seed to sow back into our lives, back into our own hearts, and into the hearts of our family and life. The gospel does work. The good message of Christ's life helps us to avoid skewed priorities so that we may make time to hear Jesus' word and take him to heart. As Jesus said, he who has ears, let him hear. The point is simple. We all have ears, so let us use them to listen to God's word. As we do, God will continue to lead us and prioritize our lives so that we grasp the gospel, grow in faith, and are motivated to live to his glory. And we won't feed the wrong dog. Continue on the top of page 48 with the Te Deum.
merciful to me and hear my prayer. Join in singing the Lord's Prayer and praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power, and grant that this day we give us all we sin, nor run into any kind of danger. And then all we do is direct us to what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. seemed to go really fast. I don't know what it was, but maybe it was just me and my excitement. Thank you, Vanessa and Chris and Jordan for helping today with making the service all that it is. Thank you to our online visitors for joining us, and thank you to all of you for also coming today. I know it's not the same without Pastor Hovland here, but you know what? We still have our God, and isn't that the whole reason we come? And does this take from the sermon? There is two dollars. Let's not feed the wrong one. The Lord has provided the, the healthy soil to grow in. It's not our job to make the plants grow. We just need to scatter the seed. So as we go out there this week, let's be sowers. And let Jesus be the farmer. May the Lord be with you. Amen.